myself Sheikh Ismail Ali Basha, Department of Botany. It is the B.Sc. Honors Botany, Geology, Microbiology and Biotechnology. This unit is useful to the essential biology first unit, introduction to systematics, taxonomy and ecology. The first one systematics, the study of organisms, identification, classification and nomenclature is known as systematics. It is concerned with the evaluation of <coughs> organisms relationships. The classification of organisms into various kingdoms have been done by systematics. The key concept and components of systematics. The key concepts and components of systematics include taxonomy. Taxonomy is the science of naming, describing and classifying the organism into hierarchical group based on their shared characteristics and evaluationary relationships. The next one is the phylogenetics. The phylogenetics is the study of the evaluationary relationship between the organisms often depicted as a phylogenetic trees or cladograms. The cladistics. The cladistic is the method used in the phylogenetic analysis to determine evaluationary relationship by identifying shared derived traits among species. The next one is the evaluationary systematics. Evaluationary systematics also known as traditional systematics or phenetics focus on both evaluationary relationships and overall similarities in traits. Next one the molecular systematics. The molecular systematics involve the analysis of DNA, RNA and protein sequence to infer evaluational relationships. Comparing the genetic data the helps research uncover. Next taxonomy and hierarchy. Taxonomy is a science that deals with naming, describing and classification of all living organisms include plants. The classification is based on the behavioral, genetic and biochemical variations, characterization, identification and classification or the process of taxonomy. Organisms are classified into similar categories namely kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus and species. The Carolus Linnaeus is considered as the father of taxonomy. He is the one who developed a procedure to name and organize species. Next one the taxonomic hierarchy. The word taxonomy is derived from the Greek word taxis meaning the arrangement or division and nomos the meaning is a method. Taxonomy is a branch of biology that refers to the process of classifying different living species. A taxon is referred to as a group of organisms classified as a unit. It is the taxonomic hierarchy. First one is the domain, king, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. This, this is the shortcut is the DKPC OFGS. Nomenclature. Nomenclature in biological classification system of naming organisms. The species to which the organism belong, belong, belongs is indicated by two words, the genus and species names which are latinized words derived from the various sources. Second one is the ICBN. ICBN is the abbreviation for the International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. The ICBN established a set of rules and gu guidelines for naming fungi, algae and plants. These rules apply not only in the plants but also other organisms traditionally studied by the botanist. The name of ICBN is now, now changed and now it is called the International Code of Nomenclature for Algae, Fungi and Plants. It is called the ICN. The next one is the principles of botanical nomenclature. The botanical nomenclature is completely independent of bacteriological and zoological nomenclature. The application of the names of the given taxonomy groups is determined via the types of nomenclature. The nomenclature of taxonomy groups is based on the priority of a pu publication. Each taxonomy group with a particular position, the circumscription and rank is allowed the bear just one correct name by the rules except in some species case, specified cases. The scientific names of all taxonomy groups are treated as a Latin with no regarded their derivation. The rules of the nomenclature are retroactive unless they are expressly limited. The conclusion of ICBN, the intent of the International Code of Botanical Nomenclature has always been dependent of, on the fact a single taxonomy name is accepted and used for identification all over the world regardless of any situation. 
There are various principles, rules and regulations which ensure that the need to study various plant species and other belonging to the taxa is being made either by this wide acceptance. All these steps are thus taken under the governance of the court. Next one is the ICZN. ZN. The full form of ICZN is the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. This ensures the scientific name assigned to the animals has one name and is recognized all over the world by the scientific community. These codes make sure that each organism gets a specific name and that name is globally and identified. The naming follows certain conventions. Each scientific name has a two parts, a generic name and a specific epithet. Rules of ICZN The International Code of Zoological Nomenclature consists of a, a pack of rules and recommendations that governs the scientific names of animals. These rules and recommendations are designed to the promote stability and order in animal taxonomy and to ensure that each animal's na name is unique. Some of the key rules of ICJN include scientific names must be published in a peer-reviewed journal or book. Scientific names must be Latinized. Each scientific name must be unique. The first scientific name for all animals is the valid name and subsequent scientific names are synonyms. The conclusion the ICZN is the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature which governs the scientific nomenclature of animals. It is important to follow the ICZN when naming a new animal species as it helps to the ensure that all animals are given constant and the accurate names. Binomial Nomenclature The system of binomial nomenclature was introduced by Carolus Linnaeus. Multiple local names make it the extremely difficult to identify any organisms globally and keep a track of the number of species. Thus, it creates a lot of confusion. To get rid of this confusion, a standard protocol came up. According to it, each and every organism would have one scientific name which would be used by everyone to identify any organism. This process of standardized naming is called as a binomial nomenclature. All living species include plants, animals, birds and also some microbes have their own scientific names. The scientific name of the tiger is presented the Panthera tigris. Panthera is represent the genus and tigris represent a particular species or a specific epithet. The scientific name of human is present as Homo sapiens. Homo represent the genus and sapiens represent the, a particular species. The Indian bullfrog is scientifically written as a Rana tigrina. Rana is the name of the genus and tigrina is the name of the specific species. Trinomial nomenclature. Trinomial nomenclature is a, an extension of the traditional binomial nomenclature system used to name and classify living organisms, particularly subspecies and varieties within a species. While binomial nomenclature employs a two-part naming, genus and species, trinomial nomenclature adds a third part of the further specify a subspecies or variety. Trinomial names are a particularly useful when dealing with the population of a species that exhibit the distinct variation but are a still part of the same species. The key points about trinomial nomenclature, the subspecies and varieties. Trinomial nomenclature is primarily employed to name subspecies distinct the geographically or morphologically separated population within a species and varieties distinct variation within a species that may not be geographically separated. Hierarchical structure, the trinomial nomin follows the a hierarchical structure with the genus name capitalized and italized and underlined followed by the, the specific epithet, the lower case and italized or underlined and finally the subspecies with the lower case and not it, italicized or underlined. Example of trinomial nomenclature, the binomial, no, binomial name is the Panthera leo. The trinomial name for a subspecies Panthera leo leo African line. Trinomial name for the variety Panthera leo persica, the Asiatic line. Next concept, ecology. Ecology is a branch of science including the human science, population, community, ecosystem and biosphere. Ecology is the study of organisms, the environment, how the organisms interact with the each other and their environment. It is studied at various levels such as organisms, population, community, biosphere and ecosystem. The types of ecology, the ecological studies levels is the global ecology, landscape ecology, ecosystem ecology, community ecology, population ecology, 
organismal ecology. Next one the concept is the ecosystem. An ecosystem is a structural and functional unit of the ecology where the living organisms interact with each other and the surrounding environment. In other words, an ecosystem is a chain of inter inter interaction between the organisms and their environment. The term ecosystem was first coined by A.Z. Tonsley, an English botanist in 1935. The structure of the ecosystem, the ecosystem is two parts, abiotic factors and biotic factors. The biotic factors further divided into producers, consumers and decomposers. The consumers are divided into primary consumers, secondary consumers and tertiary consumers. The primary consumers are also known as the herbivores. The secondary consumers are also known as a primary carnivores. Tertiary consumers are also known as a secondary carnivores. Types of ecosystem. An ecosystem can be as small as an oasis in the desert or a big as an ocean spanning thousands of miles. There are two types of ecosystem. Terrestrial ecosystem and aquatic ecosystem. Terrestrial ecosystem. The terrestrial ecosystems are exclusively land based ecosystems. There are different types of terrestrial ecosystem distributed around various geological zones. They are as follows. Forest ecosystem, grassland ecosystem, tundra ecosystem, desert ecosystem. Next one, the aquatic ecosystem. The aquatic ecosystems are ecosystems present in a body of water. This can be further divided into two types. The namely freshwater ecosystem and marine ecosystem. The function of ecosystem. The functions of the ecosystem are as follows. It regulates the essential ecological process, supports the life system and retender stability. It is also responsible for the cycling of nutrients between the biotic and abiotic components. It maintains the balance among the various trophic levels in the ecosystem. It cycles the minerals through the biosphere. Next concept biodiversity conservation. Biodiversity conservation is the protection and management of biodiversity to obtain resource for sustainable development. Biodiversity conservation has three main objects to preserve the diversity of species, sustainable util utilization of species and ecosystem, to maintain life supporting system and essential ecological process. Biodiversity and its conservation methods, the biodiversity refer to the variability of a life on earth. It can be conserved in the following ways, in situ conservation and ex situ conservation. In situ conservation, the in situ conservation of biodiversity is the conservation of species within their natural habitat. In this method, the natural ecosystem is maintained and protected. The in situ conservation has several advantages following are the important advantages of in situ conservation. The first one is the national parks. These are the small reserves maintained by the government. It is boundaries are well democratized and human activities such as a grazing, forestry, habitat and cultivations are prohibited. Example, Kanha National Park and Bandipur National Parks. Next one is the wildlife sanctuaries. These are the regions where only wild animals are found. Human activities such as a timber harvesting, cultivation, culture of uh, collection of woods and other forest products are allowed. Here as long as they do not interface with the conservation project. Also tourists visit these places for the recreation. Biosphere reservoirs. The biosphere reservoirs are multi-purpose protected areas where the wildlife traditional lifestyle of the inhabitants and domesticated plants and animals are protected. Tourism and research activities are permitted here. Ex situ conservation. Ex situ conservation of biodiversity involves the breeding and maintenance of the endangered species in artificial ecosystems such as zoos, nurseries, botanical gardens, gene banks, etc. There is a less competition for the food, water and space among the organisms. Ex situ conservation has the following advantages. The animals are provided with a longer time and the breeding activity. The species a bred in uh, captivity can be reintroduced in the wild. The genetic techniques can be used for the preservation of the endangered species. Next comes the pollution. Pollution is the introduce of substances that cause the adverse change in the environment and living entities. The pollution need, to not, uh, need not always be caused by the chemical substance such as a particulates like a smoke, dust. Forms of energy such as a sound, heat, light can also cause the pollution. These substances that cause the pollution are called pollutants. Types of pollutions Air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution and noise pollution. 
एयर पोल्यूशन एयर पोल्यूशन रेफर टू द रिलीज ऑफ कंटामिनेट्स लाइक केमिकल्स हार्मफुल गैसेस पार्टिकुलेट्स बायोलॉजिकल मॉलिक्यूल्स एटसेट्रा इनटू द एटमॉस्फेयर दिस कंटामिनेट्स आर पिट डिटरमिनेंटल एंड इन सम केसेस पोजेस सीरियस हेल्थ इश्यूज नेक्स्ट वन द वाटर पोल्यूशन वाटर पोल्यूशन अकर्स व्हेन हार्मफुल पोल्यूटेंट्स एंड पार्टिकल्स मैटर आर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इनटू द वाटर बॉडी दिस कंटामिनेट्स आर जनरली इंट्रोड्यूस्ड बाय द ह्यूमन एक्टिविटीज लाइक ए इम्प्रॉपर सीवेज ट्रीटमेंट ऑयल स्पेल्स However, even natural process such as a eutrophication can cause water pollution. Next one, soil pollution. Soil pollution refer to the degradation of the land due to the presence of chemicals or other man-made substances in the soil. This can drastically impact life directly or indirectly. For instance, any toxic chemicals present in the soil will get absorbed by the plants. Next one, noise pollution. noise pollution is the generally man made and refer to the excessive amount of noise is the surrounding that the distribute the natural balance in general any sound which is over 85 decibels is the considered to be detrimental also the duration and an individual exposed place an impact on their health next one the climate changes the climate changes is a major globally challenge today and the world is become more vulnerable to the change the climate change refer to the changes in the earth's climate condition it describe the changes in the atmosphere which have taken place over a period ranging from the decades to the millions of years a recent report from the united nation uh, predicted that the average global temperature could increase by the 6 degree celsius at the end of this century the climate changes has an adverse effect on the environment and ecosystem with the help of this essay student will to know the causes and effects of the climate changes and possible solutions causes climate changes the earth climate has always changed and evolved some of the changes have been due to the natural causes such as the volcanoes eruption floods forest fires etc but pretty a few of them are due to human activities the human activities such as the deforestation burning fossil fuels or farming livestock etc generate an enormous amount of a greenhouse gases this results in the greenhouse effect and global warming which are the major causes of the climate change effect of the climate change if the current situation of climate change continues in similar manner then it will be impact all form of the life on on the earth the earth temperature will be rise the monsoon patterns will change sea levels will rise and storms volcanic eruptions and natural disasters will be occur frequently the biological and ecological balance of the earth will get disturbed the environmental will get polluted and humans will not be able to get fresh air to breathe and fresh water to drink life on earth will come to the an end